Welcome back friends, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this video lecture, we are going to talk about natural selection. So if you are a school student or college student, doesn't matter, but this idea of natural selection is very, very important. And I want to clear this idea for you. So what is natural selection? In very simple terms, I'm going to explain uh, with the help of this PowerPoint presentation. So let, let me take a color here. Let's take uh, this and let's begin. Now to understand natural selection, you need to know three important properties because the natural selection process works on three important properties, three important principles. What are those three principles? The principle number one is that most characteristics are inherited. Most of the characteristics that we see in the whole world in different animal kingdom, they are inheritable characters. That means they can transfer from one generation to the next generation, from father to the son or daughter, from mother to the son and daughter. This is the very first principle. The principle number two is that more offspring are produced than are able to survive. So every single organism produced more number of offspring that they actually need to, serve, uh, to produce. So uh, they produce let's say 10 offsprings among them, more offsprings are produced. So 10 offsprings are produced among the 10, let's say 5 will survive. In some other organism out of 10, 2 will survive. In some other organism out of 10, 8 will survive. So this is a variation uh, of the number of offspring that can survive. So for example, there are two organism, organism X and organism Y. Organism X produces 10 offspring and 7 out of 10 can survive. While organism Y produce 10 offsprings, 3 out of 10 can survive. So this is a feature, this is a reality, this is what we can see in the animal uh, kingdom. And the third important principle is that offspring with more favorable characteristics will survive and have more offspring of their own in future times. And that's quite logical. Among those who survived, among those who survived, they will reproduce and they will make more. So out of the 7 survived, out of the seven, they will also make five more offsprings and they will survive. So this is the way to continue. Okay? These are the three principles and the whole idea of natural selection is based on this principle. Now think of this idea that we know that an offspring is going to produce, uh, an organism is going to produce enough number of offspring. Among those enough number, some will survive, some will die, obviously. Some organism will die, some will survive. Now depending on the percentage of offspring that can survive, we mark those as a fitness or evolutionary fitness. So now the next thing that you need to understand uh, before understanding the natural selection is this idea of fitness. So what is this fitness? Fitness means evolutionary fitness. Evolutionary fitness. We are not talking about a fitness as a general sense of English uh, dictionary. Not like that. So evolutionary fitness has nothing to do with the stre strength, speed or size of an organism. For example, a tiny male bird with bright feathers might produce more offspring than a stronger dull male. So there is nothing to deal with the strength, speed or size of the organism. Fitness means the genetic fitness or the evolutionary fitness means how many offspring an organism can produce, right? The ability to produce offspring is counted as a fitness. So to produce offspring, an organism need to survive till the reproductive age, right? So the organism need to survive till the reproductive age in order to produce offspring. Second thing, they need to find their proper mate for reproduction. And the third is the successful reproduction. All these three things together will be counted as the ability to survive and reproduce or counted as the evolutionary fitness of an organism. So now what we know, is now if you go back and if you see here in between these two organism x and y x 10 offspring produce y also 10 offspring produce but x 7 out of 10 can survive y 3 out of 10 can survive so which between x and y has more fitness x has greater fitness than y so between x and y who will get extra advantage during natural selection who will be selected by the nature x will be more selected by nature over Y. So between X and Y, if nature needs to select one organism than the other, then the X will be selected. The X will be selected over Y. And this is what's happening in natural selection. Okay, That is natural selection in simple terms, nature's selection. So nature selects the best fit organism to the uh, environment, not the best strongest, not the smartest, but the most fit to that environment, to that environmental conditions. And we know what fitness is all about. So that is natural selection. So now from a pool of different organisms, remember there are different organisms mean they have different genetic variations. They have di different uh, what we can say gene frequencies. So all these frequencies if we take all their genotypes together for all the organisms genotype if we put them together in a bucket we call it a gene pool. Now that gene pool is there 
for all organism every uh, genotype is there inside the gene pool now for a fit organism that gene pool if you are going to see for a fit organism they are going to contribute to the gene pool more they are more going to contribute to the gene pool compared to the other and those organisms will be selected who are contributing more to the gene pool okay that is the idea of the natural selection so nature will select one over the other now there are multiple ways nature select there are multiple processes of selection now for the selection for the natural selection there is a selection pressure that drives the natural selection right so what is the selection pressure the selection pressure can be many things mostly the environmental factors that drives the natural selection now we are going to see multiple examples of natural selection and based on the the pressure of selection pressure or selection uh, effort there are different types of natural selection we have a directional natural selection we have a disruptive natural selection and we have a uh, stabilizing natural selection we are going to see that in a moment and i am going to give you one example of natural selection before closing that in so the example is antibiotic resistance okay and if you can see this is horrendous picture you are going to see here in the in this side is this is about the antibiotic resistance okay this uh, is a picture of antibiotic resistance you can clearly see that this was uh, very long ago very long ago we have something like this and now we have something like this so you can see these are all antibiotics in the white paper disc these are antibiotics and when you put the antibiotics in the agar media where we have uh, like complete lawn of bacteria and you can clearly see that these are known as zone of inhibition where there is no growth of bacteria zone of inhibition you can see there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 different antibiotics are used and all the antibiotics are killing the bacteria so they all have their zone of inhibition okay so all that we were active against the bacteria but now after many years when we repeatedly use the antibiotics and we will know we repeatedly use the antibiotic without understanding the consequence of it and we use it uh, like without any proper guidance we use it uh, as a over, over the counter drug and as a result what happens is that uh, we do not use it till the to, to, uh, till the time frame that we should take it we generally stop taking the antibiotics the moment we feel good about it but actually there is a normally 3 days 5 days and 10 days course and 14 days courses that we don't go for so as a result of which what happens is that some of the bacteria finds the way out they get some sort of mutation they finds the way out and now they are not susceptible to that antibiotic they are resistant to those antibiotics so now we can clearly see that these antibiotics are no longer effective so they don't have any uh, this is very faint though they don't have any sort of zone of inhibition and there's only one two three four five six uh, out of twelve six seven out of twelve now left to have the antibiotic activity against the bacteria or antibacterial activity there so 12 out of 12 was susceptible but now 6 to 7 out of 12 susceptible so you can see now what happens is that these bacteria that are present here and here they developed as a multi drug resistance bacteria multi drug resistant bacteria and how exactly multi drug resistant bacteria develop for that we are going to see this picture this illustrated drawing you see this is uh, the list of bacteria okay all in this uh, yellow color harmful bacterial colonies present there okay denoted with yellow color bacteria so all of them are susceptible against the antibiotic so we put the antibiotic and if we put the antibiotic this antibiotic is going to kill them no doubt about it they are going to kill it but what happened is that let's say the dosage is 2 into 5 2 antibiotics of 500 milligram for 5 days this is a normal dose but what we did is that we took it for 3 days only we left it for 2 more days so what happens is that some of the bacteria still remained and among them at least 1 or 2 some bacteria gain some sort of mutation a mutation that creates antibiotic resistance it's very common for the uh, mut for mutations to alter the bacterial gene or bacterial chromosome in such a way so that they get to change the structures and as a result of which they become uh, resistant against a particular antibiotic so at this point they become resistance against the particular antibiotic this red one it's denoted with the red one so now what happens is that their antibiotics create selective pressure now this same antibiotic that we use to kill the bacteria is acting as a selection pressure remember i told you about the natural selection is that there should be some sort of uh, selection pressure here the selection pressure is the antibiotic itself that same antibiotic is acting as a selective pressure 
and that start killing all the susceptible bacteria here but fail to kill the mutated form of the bacteria the red colored bacteria here so what will happen is that after several rounds of use with the same antibiotic even if we use it for 5 days 10 days that antibiotic will be capable of killing rest all other bacteria except for that mutated form of bacteria denoted in red color so what will happen is that this mutated bacteria it's going to transfer the gene the mutated uh, gene or the antibiotic resistance gene uh, from that bacteria to the neighboring bacteria and bacteria can transfer their own gene not only to the next generation but also between the individuals of the same generation via the mode known as horizontal gene transfer or HGT horizontal gene transfer with horizontal gene transfer as well as vertical gene transfer in both the way uh, the bacteria is capable of transferring their antibiotic resistance gene so the more they will reproduce they will spread that antibiotic resistance genes and soon what will happen we have a population of bacteria which is no longer susceptible against this antibiotic that we started with let's say if it's tetracycline that we started with so now this red bacteria they are not susceptible against tetracycline they are tetracycline resistance so they are tetracycline resistance because they have the tetracycline resistance gene as a result of mutation inside of them so this is how exactly natural selection works this is a natural selection but in this case the selection is made by us by utilizing antibiotic improper use of antibiotic an antibiotic acts as a selection pressure for this process so this is an example of natural selection and that concludes our understanding of natural selection as a whole if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye